of uh, that organization that can maybe give it just a brief overview of what you're kind of looking for, and you can go ahead and speak at the podium. And state your name first. Yeah, I will. Okay. Okay, well, thank you for being here. I know this isn't what you planned on doing tonight. You're taking time out of your schedule, so um, it seems like we're always in a time crunch and to expedite things. Um, we had to call this special meeting, so thank you again, all of you, for being here. So I'm gonna pass out some documents here, and then I'm just gonna read um, something that was written up by our general manager. Just be sure to announce yourself too when you get back up. Okay, my name is Ann Kranz. Uh, I'm a resident here in Painesville. I, currently, I own the building that's right next to Corona's Brewing Properties, the flight pool business there. Um, and I was the one that sold a lot to our ownership group. Um, so the documents here that I just passed out, this is a, a letter that was kind of put together by Laura Nyokas, who is gonna be our general manager slash owner. Um, and it kind of shares the sentiment of all of our owners here. So. Um, it's a, our Corona's Brewing Company is a community-minded project seeking a parking variance due to the challenging shape of our parking lot. And I think you've been here and you've seen the shape of the lot. It just, you know, to get a building on there and to not have straight squares, it's, it's just been difficult to try to design the thing. We've done the best we can with uh, engineers over in Cold Spring, O'Malley, and Cron to get as many squeezed in there as we can and still be mindful of uh, the handicap accessible and also... Um, you know, just safety reasons to, to have the sizes and shapes big enough for people to be able to get in and out without, you know, causing accidents. So uh, the current city parking ordinance requires us to have 86 spaces. However, the layout of our lot makes it difficult to accommodate this number. Additionally, our proximity to a residential lot imposes further setbacks, complicating our efforts to meet the required number of parking spaces. To address this issue, KBC, Coronas Brewing Company, has secured a lease agreement with a neighboring business which is myself, providing an additional 11 parking spaces, which actually turned out to be nine. Um, we could squeeze 11, but again, to be safe, and you know, last thing we want to do is have people run, coming in and calling the sheriff's department and, and insurance companies to say they have fender benders. You just, you need to give people enough space to get in and out there safely. Um, so we you know, additional nine spaces on our property. So um, we've mapped out 37, and you can just pass this one down. So the highlighted ones will be the additional nine, and that's uh, on my property. And um, so those will be in addition to the 37. So that's uh, 46 spaces that we're gonna be with. So Coronas Brewing Company is a unique project that has been in development for the past year and a half. Our focus extends beyond brewing great beer. We aim to create an inclusive community space. Our offerings will include food, homemade sodas, and ice cream, along with a large patio featuring yard games such as bean bags. Despite the parking challenges, our central location near the bike trail encourages visitors to walk or bike to Rona Spruin Company. To support this, we plan to install an e-bike charging station on the property. We also are committed to community engagement. We have established connections with local school community and plan to collaborate with the woodworking and shop landscaping classes, as well as the new 8 to 21 plus program. In conclusion, we request that the parking variance be granted to allow this valuable community project to proceed. So in addition to that, I'll just add a few more comments. Um, I've been keeping track of the parking uh, spaces and um, uh, how many people have been up at uh, uh, Shady's 55. And you know, mostly on snow nights, it's you know, 10 to 15 is, is an average. I've seen as many as 60 to 70 on special events, but I just look at what we have and the times I've went up there, weekends during the day, lunch hour, the times that I've seen over 40 cars there has not been that many. Now we realize and hope that that is a problem that we have to address. So 
the, le or the nine additional spaces, that's actually going to be a lease drawn up between Kronos Brewing Company and myself, the owner of Crans and Crans, which is a flagpole business. Um, there's additional uh, <coughs> things that we're looking at. One is um, the neighbor to our west. Um, Roger Sieben owns a nice piece of property, and I've been in communication with him is in, uh, in hopes to secure a lease with him for additional spaces and also places to put snow for our snow removal. Um, he, he's interested actively in selling it. It's not listed. We've had a long dialogue with him. We hope that that gets to be something that will eliminate all of our worries and, yeah. and make great opportunities available for us. But we realize during special events um, and certain times people are going to have to park somewhere. So a remedy that, that we've talked about and that I feel will work is, again, I own the property next to it. Those nine spaces are going to be there all day, every day. When we run into additional problems, we're going to have a lot of signage made up to direct people to go to the east side of that property. And most of you have driven by there familiar with it. That's a big parking lot. That business closes at 430 and they're not open weekends. And a lot of times it's going to be the evenings and the weekends that we're going to look for additional parking. So we're going to have something <coughs> there for people to, you know, direct them that way. Also in front of um, Better Fed Beef and the acclaimed furniture, that street along there, I don't know that they'll be able to park on both sides, but certainly one. And if we ever have a situation where if it's a small wedding or a gathering big enough that we can, you know, give notice ahead of time, we can make arrangements with the school or even the Lutheran church across the parking lot to shuttle people back and forth safely if that's in a small bus with seats or you know even golf carts back and forth but we do know that there is no parking along highway 55 and and when we start getting tight we'll run out with a sign to say absolutely no parking on the highway the state highway so um that's what we have for you um, I think we can do this. 90% uh, of the time, we're going to be able to take care of customers as is. Uh, when we run into you know sticky situations where there's overflow needed, I think we have we have uh, remedies for it now, and and we hope to in in a short time be able to announce to you that we 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 have it all taken care of. So that's just premature to say that yet. But um, if there's any questions the board has, I'm willing to answer or try to. Yeah, I've got one. So if I understand this right, if you're full, um, then additional parking will be available on the east side of your building. Correct. Okay, so and I'm guessing that's going to be a, probably at least 20, maybe 30 lots? Uh, I haven't mapped that one out, surveyed it. Um, I know the depths. Yep. Uh, you can probably do four rows of cars there. Yep. Um, I, I'm suspecting another 20 to 30 cars easy. Okay. So and there's access to that on the south side of the building. Yep. Um, there's an alleyway that goes around the building, so they don't have to necessarily drive okay. back up on the highway and come back out. So. Okay. So that's all I really was wondering that yep. it, would, it would go there, and that makes sense. Right. Okay. Um. Anybody else? With the fencing, um, are you going to do other than chain link fence? To On the, the south, south side? Yes, it needs to be eight feet back from the property. And I know I did see um, some description of, of what type of fence it was. It, it, I think if I remember, it was has to be six feet or seven in height. And then it's, I don't know if I'm using the right terminology, but permeable or see-through, it has to be... I believe it was 60%, you know, blocked where you can't see through it. So I guess that would be spacing between the boards or if it's, um, and we have not, as a board, I'll be honest with you, we haven't talked about what type of fencing, you know, we're looking at, but um, whatever guidelines we need to follow, obviously we will. And two of the neighbors we have a good relationship with, with two of the to south. Um, and, um, you know, I, th I think it would be prudent for us to just even ask their opinion what they'd like to see. Um, one of them expressed interest so that they're fine with that happen at an open area so they can just walk back and forth. <laughs> I don't think that most people would share that, but. Um. Uh, I, I just was concerned <coughs> that people to the south at night, the lights would, would go and cross the line and. Yep, yep. Um, I don't know what the lighting looks like outside of the building. Um, we have the setbacks on there. You can see, I think it's 89 feet and 60 on the other side. 
Um, you know, we, we do want, we have hopes that there's a patio there. And of course in the evenings, you, we'd want to have a fire pit and, but we would be very mindful of that, you know, that it's not, um, I guess floodlights shining out that way. I know they have them little string lights with more ambient or decorative type lighting that could be used instead of, but you know, we, we want to get along with our neighbors well. And I think everybody in the board, all discussions we've ever had about things that came up is yes, we want them to be friend, not full. Okay. Sounds good. So one comment I have is that, uh, the planning commission and the city council has, um, entertained, uh, Various as to parking before. Mm -hmm. uh, what I can come to mind with Tarp reminded me was tractor supply, mm -hmm. where we granted the variance because we want to be business friendly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, along with this, I'm all for it the way it's planned out right now, especially with the hope of um, uh, uh, acquiring more space somehow from Mr. Seaman. Right. So, yeah. it, it all lines up, in, in my opinion. Thank you. I agree. I think it's worth noting, we have a note from our city engineer just wondering about some of the traffic flow and dimensioning, and you know, that's one thing we don't see on here is any kind of dimensioning or traffic flow. So um, when this goes to council, they're probably going to be expecting that. So that might be something to have ready for them. Sure. Can you further that? I'm not traffic so, flow, how the cars are going to be coming in and leaving? Right. Okay. Yeah. You know, maybe dimensions between the the stalls all that one okay sure we do have that i it's not on that copy okay. perfect yeah, yeah they're something to bring nine feet in width and the straight ones are 20 mm -hmm. the diagonal ones are 18. you need a little less about six to eight feet less if you come in at a, an angle and turn out but i'll have that for for council perfect yep yeah one of the things that i've mentioned in here is that uh when vehicles are uh, it may be difficult to access while staying on the applicant's property so if it uh goes on to your property that should be no problem if they, they can, can back up a little yeah bit. they can meet yeah it, it might not be <coughs> as easy as the the high yeah. school parking lot but being that there is entrance and exit mm -hmm. abilities you know from the south side either way yeah um i, I think it yeah I, I don't look for a lot of problems here i don't but yeah good points to be made yes i know if you go to shady sometimes it's a free-for-all to where you're going to park mm -hmm. right it doesn't really make a lot of sense in how it how it's laid out but if it works, it works. Right, right. And our hours are, you know, our hours, hours are going to be shorter than a typical bar. Mm -hmm. So hopefully not as many people are overserved in our, yeah. <laughs> a little easier. I'm mostly joking, but. Anything else? We appreciate uh, you coming forward and explain that a little bit better. Uh, we do have a report and findings that we will have to submit to the council, and yep. then uh, they will make the official decision from there. <clears throat> okay. Did uh, you want to read Bill Fuchs's comments on this, Jacob? I can. Yeah, board member uh, Bill Fuchs, who wasn't able to make it here tonight, um, kind of said this property has been vacant for many decades. I'm excited to see a proposed project. Uh, due to the unusual shape, I feel variance approval is appropriate. I'm also encouraged to proceed to the uh, preventive action of acquiring overflow spaces. There may be very well the opportunity in the near future to purchase the RJ Barty Shop property, as I believe this would be available. Uh, due to the deterioration condition of the building, this will likely be a tear down new use situation, which will allow for expansion in the future. Uh, his concern that he had was the backside uh, parking spaces and the overflow parking spaces as he doesn't see a plan <coughs> for an exit towards highway 55 that would run between the buildings he's assuming that is the plan uh, with this feature these spots seem fairly useless due to the need to back out of the area before being able to drive forward um, he encourages the planning board to grant approval for this variance request and recommends to city council so I think the, the biggest thing was before the, the plans that we had was those diagonal spots of the additional 11 that they were at that angle that, you know, having a course of the vehicle to back up to then turn way out the way. Correct. Around. So knowing that, and like you explained too, having those straight on uh, now with the things that you passed down and also being able to exit the other property maybe would answer that question. I believe so too. So you're not necessarily looking at having a road between the two buildings you'd be using the same flow that you have coming into the um, 
main building that you're talking about going exit behind south of your current flagpole farm building out to the other intersection potentially I anticipate most people being able to come in and exit the same way between uh, our property KBC and um, Stephen to the to the west to park additional parking the only time really and they could I mean obviously they could go that way we plan on you know keeping the snow removed that way but uh, that would be a way to access additional parking and then from there of course they would be able to leave on I'm not sure what street it is there the one that uh, goes straight back into um, the senior center assisted living mm -hmm. <clears throat> and there are stop signs on both so yeah that hopefully would help <laughs> all right well we can go through the variance application uh, pretty much the stating of the fourth of Corona Spring properties owner of the property uh, it's described as a parcel number and the legal description of that property the first item would be the planning board believes that strict enforcement of the zoning ordinance in this instance a would impose an undue hardship or b would not impose an undue hardship and then we would have to explain our reasoning so josh a or b a. paul a and randy a i vote a as well so would impose an undue hardship because of the unique size of the lot are we okay with that? Whereas the planning board believes that the landowner's needs of, for a variance for this property is A, due to circumstances unique to the property, not caused by the landowners, or B, is not due to circumstances unique to the property, or is due to circumstances which were caused by the landowner. The chair votes A, Josh. A. Paul. A. Randy? A. And then because <coughs> again, unique to the property being that it is a unique size of the lot um, and there's required setbacks that they would need to follow. Right, the planning board finds that this a variance if granted a will not alter the essential character of the locality or b will alter the essential character of the locality because chair votes a josh a. paul a and randy a. and because there was a business there at some point before yeah um, it's already in the, meeting the correct zoning requirements. Line board finds that a variance, if granted, A will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the zoning ordinance and the comprehensive plan, or B will not be in harmony with the general purpose intent of the zoning ordinance and co comprehensive plan. Uh, chair votes A, Josh. A. Paul. A. Randy. A. It is. And because, I think Paul hit this one before, just promotion of uh, business in town and, and it's still an economic growth in the community. Therefore, based on the foregoing, the planning board recommends that this request for variance be A, granted, or B, denied. Chair votes A. I, I, A. Josh? A. Paul? A. Randy? A. Okay. And on our action sheet, I think we need an official motion for that as well. Another motion. I second it. <laughs> So I'll make that motion to approve the report and recommendation of planning board uh, application for parking variance and recommend such to city council. And Randy second. seconds it. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
and approved. So it goes on to the next step. Okay, well, thank you for all the work you do for the city in general, and then thank you for your special commitment to being here tonight to, you know, hear me come in and lead my case. So I appreciate all your consideration. Yeah, you're thank you. Yeah. Good luck with everything else. Thank you. Hopefully they break around this coming week or scheduled to. All right, go for it. Good. I think people are anxious and waiting to see something happening. I was going to wear my hat. We have hats now, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard that people are getting thirsty. Yeah, <laughs> well, it'll be, it'll be exciting, I guess, right? I was never a big beer drinker for, you know, I was a light beer drinker, so all the brewery beers, my best friend is just, he travels the whole state and he loves them. And, you know, since the onset of this, this, you know, coming to fruition, I, I've traveled more and I've started drinking more of them and they're starting to grow on me, but I don't know, I wouldn't say I'm a big brewery beer guy. Yeah. Hopefully everyone else is. Maybe keep that to yourself. <laughs> well, the brewery is more than just the beer too. It's, you know, well, the atmosphere stuff. Yeah. A couple of our members are big on that. They, they wanted a place you can come and play games and just hang out. You know, they, you probably know some of them. They do trivia and they just make it a fun place to be, right? Yeah. Different than a, a typical bar, I guess. So. You don't want trivia because Tark will just run the board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. You keep their brains in their hometown here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we can send them. There you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, man. And our next meeting is on the 19th of August still at 6 o'clock. Um, and that's all. So we are adjourned at 622. All right.